Okay, um, this is a little tutorial about the character of the inspector. I'm just going over some key quotes from an inspector's call, uh, from an inspector calls from the three acts, um, looking at the importance of uh, quotations linking to the character of the inspector. Remember, you have a choice of two questions uh, for the inspector calls question, um, and one of them will be on a character, one of them will be on a theme. So this this could be useful revision for either of those questions. Um, the first thing to point out about the inspector is a lot of students get hung up on who the inspector really is and why he did what he did. And I think you can worry too much about that and, and, and try and think more about, well, what's the dramatic effect of the inspector's character and what role does he play as a dramatic device in the play uh, to help develop um, Priestley's themes and ideas. So you're right, we can think of him as a, a ghost. Indeed, ghosts traditionally in, in tragedies would turn up um, such as Shakespeare's Hamlet and, and pose questions about um, solving a mystery. So there is an old tradition of using a ghost in a story to ask questions um, in a play to try and get to the truth. Uh, and through his name, Ghoul, you know, we could see him as almost uh, an old-fashioned ghost in a morality play who turns up. He could symbolise simply the moral conscience of society. Um, he's the one who forces people to ask questions about the way they act. We could more precisely see him as the voice of socialism because a lot of what the inspector says is connected to this idea of community, of social um, support for those vulnerable in society and for the upper classes to um, admit that they have, they have to have a role in society that they need to, to care about those beneath them. Indeed, you could see him, and I probably see him mostly as, as Priestley himself, he's the dramatist, he's the person in charge of all the exits and entrances, he is in charge of what the characters say because he forces them really um, to answer his questions. So in a way, for me, the inspector is Priestley um, promoting his socialist views. So if we start off with Act 1, um, one of the quotes that a lot of people miss because it's in the long stage directions um, at the beginning, way before the inspector has even come on stage, uh, is Priestley writes, the lighting should be pink and intimate until the inspector arrives and then it should be brighter and harder. So it's important to note that this is a drama and the moment the inspector would come on stage, um, the director would have made sure that the lighting changes and those adjectives brighter and harder obviously indicate um, the effect that the inspector has on the atmosphere of um, the family home, which was one of celebration with the engagement between Sheila and Gerald. So that lighting changes. When Burling offers him a drink, he says, I'm on duty, which I think the emotive use of the word duty, I think he says later on in, in, in the act, it's my duty to ask questions is important. Um, and it's almost, again, Priestley sort of saying it's my duty as a dramatist to present serious ideas in this play, even though it's a, a murder mystery uh, and it's enjoyable and it's tense and it's exciting. He has a duty, just like the inspector, to force us to think about serious things. Burling tries to you know, manipulate him with alcohol and it shows his sober and serious attitude from the outset. The language that he uses to describe Eva Smith's death is often very emotive and blunt. Burnt her inside out is, is a startling image, really, of, of the woman who's drunk disinfectant to kill herself. But I think that works on a symbolic level as well, this idea of getting things inside out. Um, is exactly what the inspector does. He forces the family to confront these horrible things because they've been ignoring or hiding these things from themselves, pretending that life is, is, is lovely and pleasant when really, for most people, it isn't. 
So it's a disturbing image of, of her death, burnt her inside out, but that sense of something inside coming out into the open is, um, is an important symbol in the play. With stage directions, you get a lot of stage directions throughout the play to do with the inspector, and they're often similar to cutting through massively. Um, that cutting uh, verb is an important stage direction to show his power, his authority, his lack of fear. Um, so he's not intimidated by the Burlings whatsoever. Mr. Burling in Act 1 does not intimidate him at all, and he shows his authority. Um, or, or rather Priestley shows his authority through those stage directions. Page 15, I think this is an important quote to do with the socialist message of the play. It's better to ask for the earth than take it. He says that about Eva Smith's attempt to go on strike for higher wages, and Burling says some of these people would take the earth. Um, and he's, he's warning Burling, and Priestley is warning his audience in 1945, that if you don't give the working class, if you don't give the vulnerable in society help and support, um, then they could revolt and they could rise up against you and, and society would collapse. So that is an important quote in terms of um, the moral message of the play. It's a warning. On page 16, um, I think people miss the humour in the play. There is quite a lot of humour, particularly with the inspector's sort of use of irony and sarcasm. And he says when Burling again tries to influence him by saying he plays golf with the chief inspector, I think it is, at the police, police force, the inspector says dryly, I don't play golf, which, you know, golf is associated with upper middle class, upper classes in, in England at least. Um, and the inspector doesn't care about Burling's social status. So in the first scene, he really dis or first act rather, he really disrupts the celebrations. He challenges Burling's authority in class, and he controls people through his questioning, creating sympathy for, for Eva Smith, at least from Eric and Sheila's point of view. In Act Two. We move to the interrogation of Gerald and then Mrs. Burling. Um, and a few quotes that were important from Act Two, um, I thought were, um, in particular, page 29. He says, and this again is, is Priestley talking directly to the audience, I think, if there's nothing else, we'll have to share our guilt. So we might be coming to the theatre here for some entertainment. Um, but if we're going to be human beings, we will empathise with uh, the character Eva Smith and we will feel guilty about what she's, she's gone through um, because in many respects there will be people in society that we have ignored as well. You know, the homeless person that you walk past on your way to the theatre, um, the person who maybe cleans the toilets, public toilets in the theatre, um, people who are on the lower end of life, who perhaps people with more money don't think about enough. So share your guilt. That word share is important. Share, creating a sense of society. Page 37, the stage direction sharply, your daughter isn't living on the moon. He says this to Mr. Burling when Burling tries to get Sheila away to shield her from what Gerald did with Daisy Renton. And I think that's important because the inspector is not just talking about social class, but he's talking about gender, um, the way that gender is organized in society, uh, that women are shielded, or certain classes of women are shielded from the realities of the world. I think Priestley and the inspector in turn want to change and challenge that. Page 41, massively, I think it's a very important quote, and when, when you read it, you get a sense of the inspector's anger. Public men, Mr. Burling, have responsibilities as well as privileges. So those who are given power in society have, and that's a key word in the play, responsibilities. So just because you've got money and power and wealth shouldn't mean that you don't take the responsibilities you have seriously in fact it should be that you take them more seriously because you have a more privileged position 
So those in power should care about other people more. Okay, and then finally on page 48 for act two, this is at the end where we get a sense of the growing rising tension that Mrs. Burling has had Eric's child really killed really through her uh, refusal to give uh, Daisy Renton any help when she's pregnant. And the inspector says, no hushing up, eh? Make an example of the young man, eh? Public confession of responsibility, eh? Well, we know as an audience, uh, and indeed Sheila senses it, that Eric is the father of this child and Eric is the one to blame. So that dramatic irony uh, at the end of Act 2 is very, very dramatic in creating tension. Um, lastly then, Act 3, obviously the inspector leaves uh, midway through Act 3. Um, but he says on page 54, you'll be able to divide the responsibility between you when I'm gone. So we get this sense that he wants to leave. He doesn't want to be found out as a fake. Um, and there's a sense of urgency for him to go. But that word responsibility, he says, you've got to take responsibility. And then on page 55, he says, remember what you did. Um, again, that sense of him forcing the characters to take responsibility and not to forget, which is indeed exactly what Mr. and Mrs. Burling and Gerald do at the end of the play. They forget and then obviously get that shock at the end of Act 3 when the phone rings. They're probably the most important speech, and it's extended, is on page 56, just as the inspector leaves. He gives a long monologue about um, society. He says, one Eva Smith has gone, but there are millions. And he then goes on to say there are millions of John Smiths as well. So it's not just about women, it's about working class people who are ignored in society. And then at the end of the speech, again, we have this sense of threat. He says, if you don't deal with this now, if you don't take responsibility, then you will be taught it in blood, fire and anguish. And that, again, could allude to the fact that um, society will rise up, there'll be revolution. It could indicate the world wars that are coming, that obviously Priestley's audience would be familiar with. They've just lived through the Second World War in 1945 um, and obviously would know about the First World War as well. And many would have lived through that as well. So there's a sense of, of threat about that monologue and a sense of social responsibility. So there you have it, an overview of some key quotes um, for the character of the inspector and inspector calls. <laughs>